chemistry is defined as the study of matter, its composition, its properties, and the changes it undergoes. This definition is a good course outline for honors chemistry because we are going to begin by looking at the various types of matter. Then we are going to study the composition of matter, looking at atoms which are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Then we are going to look at the periodic table of elements, examining the properties of those elements and the trends of those properties. Finally, we will be considering chemical reactions, how elements are rearranged in a reaction, and yet the mass remains constant. Matter is defined as anything that has mass and volume. Matter exhibits the property of inertia. Inertia is the resistance to change in motion. For example, a body at rest tends to remain at rest, while a body in motion tends to remain in motion. You have experienced the property of inertia when you have been riding along in your car down the highway and suddenly the brakes are applied. Well, everything that is not belted down in the car when it abruptly comes to a stop continues in the forward direction. And even you, though you're belted in, you have felt that tendency to continue in forward motion. That is the property of inertia. Matter exists in four states, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Now atoms and molecules can vary in their shape, size, arrangement, motion, and individual properties, and these factors all help explain the properties of matter. The classification of matter. Matter can be homogeneous or heterogeneous, depending on its composition. Let's consider heterogeneous matter first. The prefix hetero means different, genius, type. Heterogeneous matter is made up of different types of matter, not evenly distributed, different characteristics, and you can see the individual components. Now all heterogeneous matter are mixtures. Homogeneous matter. The prefix homo means same, genius type, the same type of matter. Homogeneous matter has uniform composition and characteristics. It has only one phase. Homogeneous matter has uniform composition and it's the same type of material throughout the sample with the same characteristics. In other words, if you break a sample of homogeneous matter up into smaller pieces, each piece would have the same composition and characteristics. Homogeneous matter can be substances or mixtures. A mixture is the physical combination of two or more substances, each of which retains its individual properties. The composition can vary. There's no formula for a mixture. And finally, the components of a mixture can be separated by physical means. Let's consider the example above. How would you separate a mixture containing sugar, water, and sand found in the beaker shown in Figure 1? Figure 2 shows us heating up the mixture to make sure all of the sugar dissolves in the water. Since sand is insoluble in water, it will remain at the bottom. Figure 3 shows us filtering out the sand, leaving the sugar water in the bottom evaporating dish. And finally, in Figure 4, after the water is completely evaporated, we are left with sugar in the evaporating dish. Heating, 
filtering, and evaporating are all examples of physical changes. We have done nothing chemically to any of the components of the mixture. Let's consider what a solution is. A solution is a homogeneous mixture. A solution is made up of a solute. A solute is a substance that gets dissolved. It's found in the least amount. The solvent does the dissolving. It is found in the greatest amount. In a solution, there is an even distribution of solute and solvent. In other words, the solute gets completely dissolved. In a solution, only one phase is present. It looks like it's made up of only one component. Let's consider what a substance is. A substance is pure matter with uniform composition. There are two types of substances. The first kind are elements. Elements are composed of one kind of atom. Elements cannot be broken down by ordinary chemical means. Now we can split an atom not by chemical means but by nuclear means. There are greater than 109 elements, but only 90 are naturally occurring. Compounds are made up of two or more different atoms chemically combined in a definite ratio. Compounds can be broken down by chemical means. And the properties of the compound are different from the elements making it up. A good way to determine if something is a substance or not is to see if it has a chemical formula. If it has a chemical formula, it is a substance. Elements have formulas. Sodium, Na. Calcium, Ca. Bromine, Br. Compounds also have formulas. The formula for water, H2O. The formula for sodium chloride, NaCl. Substances have a definite formula. Mixtures do not have a formula. They may have a recipe, but it's not a chemical formula. For example, your chocolate chip cookies have a recipe. My chocolate chip cookies have a different recipe. The properties of matter. There are two types of properties of matter. There are physical properties, which are readily observable, and they can be observed without chemically changing the sample of matter. Chemical properties, on the other hand, describe how a substance responds when it comes into contact with something else. The changes of matter. There are physical changes when one or more physical properties are changed, and there are chemical changes, and that's when a new substance is formed with totally new physical and chemical properties. The energy changes. There are two types of reactions. There are endothermic reactions, endo, enter, thermic, heat, Enter heat. This is when the system absorbs energy from its surroundings. The other kind of reaction is an exothermic reaction. Exo, exit, thermic, heat, exit heat. This is when the system releases energy into its surroundings. The phases of matter are distinguished by the energy of their particles. Particles of matter in each phase are arranged differently and have different ranges of motion. Solids, for example, the particles are close together, strong attractive forces, low kinetic energy, definite shape and volume. True solids have a crystalline structure. 
The particles are arranged in regular repeating patterns. The particles can move slightly, but they do not change positions. For liquids, the particles are slightly further apart. The attractive forces are not as strong, they have greater kinetic energy, they have definite volume but indefinite shape. That means liquids take the shape of their container. The particles do not stay in fixed positions but flow freely past one another. The volume is constant because even though the particles do not stay in fixed positions, the number of particles in the space stays the same. In gases, the particles are far apart. There are weak attractive forces, they have high kinetic energy, indefinite shape and volume. The particles move in straight lines and change direction only when they strike the walls of their containers or bump into other particles. Unlike the particles in a solid or liquid, each gas particle is mostly unaffected by its neighbors. And lastly, plasma. Plasma exists at very, very high temperatures. At these high temperatures, the gas particles break down, separating into charged particles or ions. Temperatures high enough to form plasma exist naturally only in stars. Since plasma is made up of charged particles or ions, they conduct electricity and are affected by magnetic fields.